I'm the better captain. No, I'm the better captain. No, I'm the better captain. No, I'm the better captain. Uh, I'm gonna be reviewing Star Trek Beyond. Okay, so before I even get into this review, I gotta, you probably tell by what I'm wearing, I'm a big Star Trek guy. Check this shit out. I got phasers, I got tricorders, I got communicators. Beat me up, Scotty. I got, like, ship schematics. You ever want to see what's inside Jordy's visor? Check it out, yo. Talking comic books. Star Trek visual dictionary? Talking action figures too. Kirk, Bashir, yo, Lieutenant Worf, this guy's awesome. So many bad video games. I even draw my own Star Trek comics because I don't have a life. I even got this thing. It goes on my wall and does the beep boop sound. That's cool. So all that's going to bring us to the review of Star Trek Beyond. Is it any good? As a Trekkie, did I like it? As a movie, did I like it? And let me just answer that question in one simple word. Yes! Oh, this movie's so good. If you haven't seen it, I absolutely encourage you to go out and check it out right now. Like, stop watching this and go watch Star Trek Beyond because it's totally worth seeing. Now, in terms of reviewing a movie, there's three main categories that I look at. There's storyline and plot, character and character development, and music and soundtrack. So let's take a look at the very first one being storyline and plot. Now, in Star Trek Beyond, it's a pretty simple story when you really look at it. There's a bad guy who's trying to destroy the Federation and the crew of the Enterprise have to go stop them. Pretty simple stuff. But it's really, really entertaining. So you get the, the new villain, which we'll get to in just a minute. He's basically trying to release this death cloud upon a new space station so he can take it over and use that as his base of operations. Pretty standard stuff. The crew of the Enterprise gets stranded on a planet that I don't know what it's called. And then they basically have to get off and go back to the starbase and stop. Pretty simple stuff. But the big storyline that I think's the underlying kind of theme of this entire movie is the crew being about two and a half, three years into their five-year mission, how this is slowly starting to affect them. You know, you get a lot of, you know, does Kirk really want to do this anymore? You get Spock kind of going, maybe I need to go back to Vulcan and join my heritage and that sort of thing. So you see a lot of that throughout this entire movie. And I think that's the more interesting storyline throughout this entire thing. Not just good guy stopping bad guy. There's, there's a lot of like subplot going on here. Uh, the big thing in this movie is Kirk is now a year older than his dad. So that's kind of starting to weigh on him. And he's really starting to think to himself, do I actually want to be involved in Starfleet anymore? Is space exploration the thing that's for me? And throughout this movie, you see him kind of battling with that. And it's really cool. It's really interesting. And same thing with Spock. I'm not going to give too much away in terms of spoilers. I mean... I don't want to spoil it for you if you haven't seen the movie yet, so I'm going to try to keep that as a minimum. But Spock now finding out that uh, Ambassador Spock, Leonard Nimoy, has passed away. Now he is trying to decide, should I rejoin my Vulcan heritage? And you get a really good kind of give and take situation with him and Kirk. You know, they're so good as a team. They're thinking about leaving one another. Whether or not they do, you'll have to go see the movie. So, I mean, that in a nutshell is really the story, and it's really good. It's really fast. It's really entertaining. Within the first, like, 20 minutes of this movie, you see the, the Enterprise get ripped apart, and they get stranded on this planet, and it's really fun. It's almost like this Great Escape kind of Star Trek movie. It's really cool. So you should go check it out, even for just for that. In terms of character, this is the third movie in. We all know who the crew of the Enterprise is. We know who Captain Kirk is. We know who Spock is and McCoy and Sulu and Uhura and Chekhov and all these characters. We know who they are. Although I will say this, Sulu and Chekhov especially are used really, really well in this movie. More than I actually thought. Like Kirk and Chekhov's interaction throughout this movie is a lot more than I actually expected and it's really cool. And it's really nice to see them using a secondary character like Chekhov, especially after uh, the actor had passed away. So it's a, it's a nice thing to see him finally kind of getting his due. In terms of new characters, we get uh, Jayla, who's the kind of all white with the black kind of ugh, screely things. 
she's really cool. She alone is just a really kick-ass, doesn't take shit from nobody kind of character. The first time you see her, she's saving Scotty and she's getting in there and she's beating the shit out of all these aliens. It's so cool. It's really, really cool. And throughout the whole movie, she's not taking anything from Kirk. She's giving it back to Scotty. Like, it's a really good give-and-take situation with her. And she's used really well in this movie. Now, the new villain in this movie is Krall. I don't know what species he is. I don't even think they say what species he is. Or, like, why... Or, like, what he is. Um, in all honesty, that's probably where this movie kind of comes up short is... I would have liked to have seen more of him. Being the third movie in, give me a villain that I can, like, sink my teeth into. Give me a villain that I can, like, genuinely hate. That's the point of a villain. Now, I will say this. Krull, to me, is a better villain than Khan was in Into Darkness for one simple reason. He does something of consequence. So when you look at the first movie, having Nero destroy Vulcan, that's huge. That's a big thing that happens. Khan eh, doesn't really do much. Like, he kills a bad admiral, I guess. Whatever. And then in this movie, obviously, Krull destroying the Enterprise. Like, another big thing. So, in, in terms of just sheer impact, yeah, Krull's probably a little bit better than Khan. But that's kind of a nitpicky thing. Because all three villains, I think, are good in their respective films. I just would have liked to have seen more of him. And understand why he is the way he is. And really grasp why he's trying to destroy the Federation. He says it, but I want to see it, if that makes sense. Now, in terms of sound design, I always say music can make or break a movie. And in this movie, I can't really talk about the music without giving a huge spoiler away. All I can say is music is used super well in this movie, and it is very well represented. It's used in a very clever and in kind of scientific way it's really actually kind of cool now in terms of just a soundtrack this movie has really good music in it uh we get sabotage which you've all seen in the trailer there's like a rihanna song i don't even i don't know if it's in the movie i don't know uh and of course you get that really good new kind of star trek theme song and all of it's used really well throughout this movie. And the sound design, you know, when the Enterprise is shooting its phasers and shooting the torpedoes and going to warp, it's, it all sounds really good and it just immerses you in it. So what I mean by, like, how a soundtrack and music can make or break a movie, I always look at Guardians of the Galaxy. That is, like, one of the best soundtracks that I've ever seen or rather heard in a movie. But when I look at Civil War, I'm like, there's, I don't remember anything. Would, I don't remember any music in there. Like, nothing got me excited. And the music in Star Trek Beyond, it will get you excited. Especially kind of at the end part of the movie. It will really, like, mm, hit you right in the eardrums. It's awesome. So, overall, speaking as a Trekkie, speaking as just a moviegoer, this movie from start to finish is entertaining. Within the first 20 minutes, you are thrown right into the thick of things, and you are thinking to yourself, oh, shit, how are they going to get out of this one? And then they all come together and work really well as a crew, and you see that bond that they have as a crew, and more importantly, as a family. And it's really, really interesting and really, really fun. And it's just overall a really good time. Even if you don't like Star Trek, go see this movie. You're going to be entertained. You know, people who didn't like Star Trek saw the 2009 film and went, holy shit, this movie is awesome. It's the same thing here. This movie is really entertaining on all levels. Story, character, and music. Although, I, I said it before, I do want a little bit more with the villain, but that's kind of a nitpicky thing. So in terms of just like overall summer movies thus far, this by far is my favorite. If I were to rank them, uh, I don't know. It would go something like Star Trek Beyond, probably X-Men Apocalypse, uh... I, I don't know, Civil War, I guess. And then, like, Batman, Superman, and then, like, all the way down here, Ghostbusters. So in terms of summer movies, go see this movie. Like, to hell with Ghostbusters. It sucks. Don't support it. Don't waste your money. Go see something that's gonna entertain you and make you laugh and make you think and just overall make you have a good time with your friends or your family or even if you just go by yourself. Go have fun with this movie because it's totally worth your money. It's totally worth seeing on the big screen, whether it's the Ultra AV 
thing or just regular 3D or just none of that at all. It's going to make you entertained. It's going to have you on the edge of your seat. It's going to give you that 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 mm, that substance that you want in a movie. I guarantee it. So my final kind of verdict on this movie, I would give it an eight and a half out of ten. Again, it would get a little bit more if it just had a stronger villain, just a little bit. But overall, it's still a really good movie. Out of the three, I would rank it Star Trek 2009, Star Trek Beyond, then Star Trek Into Darkness. And that's saying something, because all three of these movies are awesome on their own and as a trilogy. There's no Back to the Future 2. There's no Jurassic Park 3. None of these suck. They're all awesome. They're all eights and up. So if you want a really good, fun movie to go see with your friends, your family, your girlfriend, or whoever, go see Star Trek Beyond. I guarantee you, you're going to have a good time. So if you like this review, please leave me a comment. If you've seen the movie so far, let me know what you think below. And don't forget to hit that like comment and also hit that subscribe button so you can see more of me and on Tender Gaming and co-ops and all that sort of stuff that we do. We really appreciate your support and I thank you so much for watching this review and I will see you all on the very next episode of Tender Gaming. We'll see you then. Oh, I think we all know who the best captain now is. Oh, oh, God.